Welcome to the first top five of 2019. I'm Walter Benaziak. I'm Heather Roos. And I'm Ayanna Wade. We're kicking off the new year with a countdown on the caped crusader himself. This year marks the 80th anniversary of Batman's first appearance in Detective Comics way back in 1939. From comics to movies to TV shows, The Dark Knight has had a wide variety of interpretations. The actors that have brought Batman to life on the big and small screens have helped us define the character. Going as far back as 1943, actors have been portraying Gotham's resident vigilante. As different writers and artists have tweaked him over the decades, how we saw him played on screen has evolved. Whether we see their faces in live action films or just hear their voices in animated projects, plenty of actors have taken their best shot at being the best Batman and Bruce Wayne they can be. But which of these thespians come to mind immediately when we think of the world's greatest detective? Which of them are so synonymous with the character that it has shaped their careers? These are the top five best Batman actors. Number five. Then I got him killed, my partner. My soldier. My fault. I own that. I'll carry that like everything else. Probably the least well-known Batman on our list, Bruce Greenwood should not be left out of this conversation. He has discreetly amassed quite the legacy for himself, voicing Batman in several high-profile animated endeavors. Greenwood voices Batman in the critically acclaimed Young Justice series, and while he doesn't always have a big part in that show, when he shows up, he brings the gravitas of Batman with him. Robin needed to help bring the men who murdered his family to justice. So he could turn out like you? So that he wouldn't. Last year's animated film Batman Gotham by Gaslight also featured his vocal talents. The movie is based off the Elseworlds story from 1989, but took several liberties with the material and produced a pretty decent entry in DC's animated catalog. Greenwood plays a Batman of the Victorian era hunting down Jack the Ripper. I ran into your Ripper earlier this evening, approximately six foot three inches, 250 pounds, left-handed. Good fighter. Trained. Not just a brawler. The main reason he fits onto our list, though, is the 2010 animated film Batman Under the Red Hood. A couple years ago, I ranked it as the best Batman animated movie, and I still hold that to be true today. All the emotion and nuance in that story is appropriately reflected in his performance. The possible resurrection of Jason Todd, the second Robin, who was murdered by the Joker, has Batman out of sorts. He reminisces on happier times with his young sidekick, while a new version of the villainous Red Hood is distributing lethal justice on the streets of Gotham. Unreal. We go beneath the cowl in this performance and get to the root of how Bruce truly feels about his failure to save Jason. His relationship with the Joker is also explored in a fascinating scene. All I've ever wanted to do is kill him. A day doesn't go by when I don't think about subjecting him to every horrendous torture he's dealt out to others, and then end him. Aww, so you do think about me. While many might look past Greenwood's contributions to the Batman legacy, he is an important piece of the puzzle who often does not get the recognition he deserves. The level of quality he brings to his vocal presentation creates one of the best portrayals of any of his peers. Check out the projects he's voiced Batman in and see for yourself. Number four. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. The name Adam West has become synonymous with Batman for a whole generation of people. Batman premiered on television in 1966 with a movie release that same year. Adam West played the titular character as well as his alter ego, Bruce Wayne. It's rumored that one of the reasons West was cast was because he was one of the only people who could read the lines sincerely with a straight face. West's interpretation of the character is very unusual from what one would expect when thinking of Batman. He was campy, colorful, and hammy, earning the nickname Bright Knight. But this is what made the show and the performance great. It was meant to be a comedy directed at children and young adults, and the show hit and embraced that market with tongue-in-cheek comedy. West had amazing chemistry with his sidekick Robin, played by Burt Ward. They worked so well together, it even started some interesting rumors about Batman and Robin. Batman went on to be one of the most popular shows of the mid-60s. Thousands of people grew up watching Adam West as the Caped Crusader. He became an icon. 
Long after the series and movie ended, Adam West was typecast because of the role. However, he later embraced the infamy and returned many times to the role of Batman in a variety of shows and media, including one of my favorite episodes of Batman the Animated Series. So love it or hate it, Adam West and his interpretation of the character will live on as one of the most popular and iconic versions. Number three. I want you to tell all your friends about me. What are you? I'm Batman. Following Adam West's portrayal as Batman was a golden opportunity to shift towards the darker comic book depiction. Until this point, all we had on screen was, well, you watch number four. In Tim Burton's Batman, the caped crusader was given the inevitable darker twist. The muted color palette and moody lighting was quite the shift. Going head to head with his pivotal antagonist was the right decision to show off some acting chops as well. Keaton's Batman was able to stand out in scenes with Jack Nicholson's Joker. That alone is an impressive feat. And in Batman Returns, his on-screen chemistry with Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman was palpable. He brought something even more special as Bruce Wayne that no other actor really has since. He needs the bat more than Gotham does. Keaton's Bruce barely takes care of himself while Batman seems to lay dormant in the daylight hours. Master Wayne uses sarcasm as a wall while Keaton's natural energy hints of a serious punch just below the surface. And although he's not the roided out brick wall we've come to expect, Keaton had the physicality one could hope for the midnight vigilante. Top 5 has covered his performance as well as Batman Returns before, but it was truly worth revisiting. By originating the more brooding Bat, Keaton paved the way for other interpretations of Batman. Number 2 What the hell are you? Christian Bale is the actor who has played Batman on the big screen for the longest amount of time. He had years to perfect the role. Bale first donned the cowl and cape in 2005 in Batman Begins. Bale continued to play the character for two more movies to complete the Dark Knight trilogy. Bale has been known throughout his career to be a dedicated and intense method actor. This trilogy is no exception. He threw himself into the role, bulking up, reading comics, learning martial arts in order to perform stunts. Bale brought an unmatched intensity to Batman, playing that side of the character as, and I quote, an absolute sincere creature. He makes it feel like Batman is something primal that Bruce Wayne struggles to contain and control. Although I will admit, that Batman voice does border on comical. He must have friends. As Bruce Wayne, Bale plays a perfect mix of conceited, aloof, confident yet witty, fitting of a billionaire playboy. Bale was a piece of the puzzle that came together to make the Dark Knight trilogy amazing, changing the landscape of modern superhero movies. His performance is unforgettable. And the number one best Batman actor is. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. Probably the most obvious number one of any top five that we've ever done, but that doesn't make it any less true. So much has been said about Kevin Conroy's Batman over the years that you likely already know why he's in our top spot. But just to add our own praises onto the greatest Batman, his is the only voice I hear when I'm reading the Cape Crusaders dialogue in a comic. When I think of Batman's voice, it's Conroy's that comes to mind naturally. His heavy, deep approach to the character was a hit from the beginning, thoughtful and soft-spoken in quiet moments, but appropriately terrifying in others. Also, in the earlier seasons of the animated series, his Bruce Wayne was very different. Playing up the playboy, nice guy heir to the Wayne family fortune created a nice contrast. Thanks for the handkerchief, Arthur. You know where you can stick it. Since then, his Batman and Bruce voices have become almost the same, but we know he can change it up if he ever feels the need to. On the other end of the spectrum, he does a great aged Bruce in Batman Beyond. There is a noticeable shift in his pitch and gruffer, slower cadence to his speaking. It's what I want, Bruce. Stupid kid. You don't know what you want. None of you ever did. 
The guy can do it all, and he's not only well known to those who grew up watching Batman the Animated Series. Sure, that show has endured as one of the best animated series of all time, but he's still voicing the Dark Knight in a lot of projects. More modern animated films and shows like Batman and Harley Quinn and Justice League Action have kept him in the spotlight, but he might be most well known to younger fans from his work in the Arkham Asylum and Injustice video games. With a recently announced Justice League vs. The Final Five featuring Conroy once again donning the proverbial cape and cowl, there's no end in sight and I for one would love to hear him voice Batman as long as he wants. We want to hear what you guys think. Who is your favorite Batman actor? What do you want to see us cover next on the show? Leave a comment and let us know. To keep in touch, you could like my Facebook page or follow along on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or subscribe to my animated movie review series right here on YouTube. And you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, or Twitch where I stream on Wednesday nights. We'll catch you back here next week with a brand new episode of Top 5. One does not simply tease the next episode of Top 5 without giving any clues. Mmm. Second breakfast? Eleven seeds? Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs>